Mark up on in the chat. Get the questions in the chat and uh, anything else you want to know about moving to Portugal, let's pop that in there and let's get cracking tonight. Just want to make sure we are going out on Zoom and then we'll say hi. Uh, Gilda is with us. Queen of the Visas is with us this evening. And yes, it looks like we are going out on YouTube, which is good news. Um, and uh, yes, let's say hello to you, Gilda. How are you? Great hello. To see you. I'm fine. Thank you. So what is new uh, in the world of visas, Gilda? Uh, well, as you know, uh, we have now some news about the, the program of the new government. Yes. Um, and um, what they say is that um, they are going to look at the immigration in a more careful way. Yes. Uh, and uh, talking uh, to some people that that I know that make part of what the is? of the government. Yeah. Um, they told me that uh, this is not going to have any impact on the, um, the D seven process. Well, at least it's not the idea. It's not going to have an impact on the D seven process. It's going to be mainly. Uh, with the expression of interests, people that come without a visa and then they apply for work here and right. also and also for work visas. Okay, all right. So that's very interesting. The new government then has already started dialogue about migration into Portugal and it would appear from what you can glean from, from insiders within the government, they won't be focusing on the D7. It's more people who've just come straight into Portugal looking for work. And so do we detect a slight tightening up of that end of migration here in Portugal, those people who've just come here hoping to get a work permit? Yes, uh, the the process needs to, make, uh, to be made in the consulate, but I think uh, it looks like they are going to put, um, how do you say, um, like a, uh, a limited number of, of people that can come for each type of job. Okay, very interesting times then. Uh, a, a change, a cultural shift, perhaps with migration, inward migration. Into well, this is not. This is what they they are thinking about doing it. It's yes, so not a, law, not law, yeah, but that that's where the focus of their discussion is at the moment. Yes, that's the the focus of the discussion. Yeah. Very interesting. The new brooms of politics are sweeping uh, by the sound of it, and they're getting down to work and and having such discussion. So, thank you, Gilda. Anything else uh, from from the world of the visas this evening? Uh, no, uh, we still uh, we still without uh, having uh, many appointments. Uh, but it seems that uh, right now um, they had kind of a portal to insert the data and to try to have an appointment. And we have been doing that on behalf of our clients. Uh, but so far we had um, we hadn't. Uh, any positive answer but i know uh, that some people uh, did it and and had positive answers so that may be a start for mm -hmm. people that are that the visa was issued and didn't have um an appointment okay all right thanks for the time being gilda gilda's with us tonight gilda Pereira from a from ei of course uh, answering questions on any kind of um, visa and moving to Portugal from that angle. Thank you very much, Gilda, for the time being. Uh, let's go to Steve, uh, who was with us uh, pretty pretty keenly this tonight. Steve, uh, tuning in with us from the UK. How is it over there and what's going on in the world of currency? Uh, yes, yeah, so lots of uh, actually some good movement for, for US clients, which is which is nice. It's been very uh, over the, probably the last month or so. We've not had lots and lots of movement, but we've actually seen some, some positive movement for for the dollar over the last few days. We've had lots of lots of clients jumping on the back of that. It's probably moved probably over a cent in the last in the last day or so. So uh, like I say, lots of clients have been on, on the back of that. You know, I'm a big believer in. You know, when you see some positive movement to take advantage of that. Yeah. Uh, and that's what, our, you know, our clients have done. Um, just, you know, guys that are coming in from the UK, the euro has been pretty flat, if I'm honest, for the, pretty much all of this year. So it's, you know, and there's not been too much movement with that. You, you might be one of those, you just have to get get, get it done when you, when you can. So, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good for, for dollar sellers at the moment. OK, so better for the dollar, not so good for the pound. What are we looking for that will change that? Is it the general election announcement? 
Yeah, that can always have an effect. You can imagine Mr. Trump will uh, have a bit of a, have an effect on that. He uh, always seems to have an effect one way or another okay. um, and things like that. So it's, you know, it's, it, it will depend as well. You know, the Fed have been talking about, you know, cut, they keep changing their mind about how many cuts they're going to do this year. Um, if we see some cuts, that could go against could go against the dollar. So it's um, while, while the going's good, you know, lots of clients are jumping on that. Now there's this tool you could get in on, on forward contracts as well while while it is good as well um and things like that so it's if the, if the fed decides to start cutting you could see you go back the other way but then again the, the you know over in uh in the eu they're going to have to do something similar soon as well so um that could almost negate it as well if they start cutting at the same time um so we just have to wait and see what what they decide to do they keep they keep changing their mind at the moment all right. Well, I was I was thinking more of the UK scene, but thank you for that insight from the US there. Uh, oh, Rishi sorry. Sunak. No, no, no problem. Rishi Sunak is playing his cards pretty close to his chest, but I think there will be an election probably won't there, uh, later on uh, this year in the United Kingdom. So thanks for being with us tonight. You can open a Spartan FX account by going through to the uh, Expats Portugal business directory. Click on Spartan FX and you can open an account absolutely free. And as Steve said, you can create forward contracts as well. There are all sorts of ways of uh, maximizing um, your your purchasing power uh, and um, making some wise moves there. If any, if 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 the whole world of currency seems very complicated to you, you can also get some help from the team, right, Steve? You know, people will, will, will take the time to talk with you one to one and guide you through it. Numbers aren't everybody's cup of tea, are they? No, exactly. Yeah. So we're always here to try and help, you know, try and, you know, we, we know moving overseas is very stressful. And obviously that's why all of us are on these sorts of uh, these webinars, you know, and so we're happy to talk you through everything, um, you know, in and out of work hours. It's no problem. I mean, I was actually just on a call um, eight o'clock tonight as well, you know, in, in the UK. So um, it's what we're here to do. We want to make, you know, it's a smooth and a simple and, you know, make you feel comfortable uh, as much as we can. Excellent. Okay, find Spartan FX in the business directory uh, of expatsportugal.com. Thanks for the time being, Steve. If you've got any questions for Steve about currency, dollars, pounds, and other currencies, of course, as well, the major currencies, uh, you can ask those of Steve in the chat. Uh, do so also over on YouTube. We've got Daniel with us tonight as well. Good evening to you, Daniel. How are you? Good away. Uh, hello, good evening. I'm quite all right. What about yourself? I'm pretty well. It's been a beautiful day here in Portugal, and it's taken far too long for me to be able to say that, quite frankly. But what a beautiful day all around the country. Yes. I was sent what a picture from the Algarve. 35 degrees at times in the Algarve. Oh. Awesome. How about you? Well, the, for me, it was the, the first day that I went to, to see the beach and the, the, the sea, so I'm quite happy. And indeed, it was a glorious day. So uh, long days, warm days, this is what Portugal is about. Yes, finally. Um, any news from the world of law um, or parliament, for that matter, Daniel? Well, to be honest, I haven't seen the news yet because I left the office at around seven. I went straight to the beach and then I came here. So that was it. <laughs> Right. I that have gives... no idea what's going on on the world of law or um, on uh, the parliament. Uh, to be honest, I haven't seen the news yet today. Good for you, right? Law, <laughs> yes. parliament, beach. It yeah. seems that he's very relaxed. Are you on vacation, Daniel? <laughs> no, no, no. I wish. I wish. <laughs> it looks like you're having a yeah. good life. Uh, let's let's <laughs> reframe that as Daniel having a very good sense of work-life balance. He did say he left the office at seven, Gilda, for goodness sake. The man deserves a, a, a trip home via the beach. And that gives me an idea for later on. Favourite beaches in Portugal. Um, and that's, of course, if if the panel will tell us about their favourite secret beaches here in Portugal. Mm. We'll, see. we'll see about that a little bit later on. So any questions at all, actually, about Portuguese language culture you can always ask those of the dream team as well on these sessions so thanks daniel for the time being if you've got any questions about the law uh put those to daniel in the chat let's go to nunu the world of insurance how's that looking tonight nunu hello good evening everyone first of all congratulations for such positivity uh, daniel <laughs> Con construct uh contrasting with the portuguese approach which is uh oh how are you doing oh Mais ou menos. Mais ou menos. So, yeah, I love I love people, positive people. So congratulations. So regarding insurance uh, world, there are no much news. Nevertheless, um, some news about uh, the oncology disease uh, um, were arrived this this week, and it seems that uh, it's hitting more and more people and more and more at younger ages. Um, some people is questioning if this is due to 
the the covid period which people uh, didn't uh, uh, haven't did uh, exams or what but it's not a specific uh, kind of uh, uh, cancer so yes uh, the the public system is is handling with this and also also the private uh, and this drive us to the insurance world because we start seeing some movements on the wording of the health insurance policies uh, sometimes don't um, don't advising uh, us or the customers about about the changes uh, but uh, I'm expecting that the um, the healthcare and all of these problems uh, will have some reflex on the wording and on the coverages, limits, copays, and so on. But wow. uh, not much to share for now. No, <laughs> okay, but well, thanks for the heads up on that. Okay, very interesting. Thank you very much, Nunu. The dream team are here, everybody. Get those questions in. Let's go. Vamos in Bora. Okay, uh, first question then will be from, well, we've got Larry S and Larry M. Let's start with Larry S. Just received my D7. What are my tax privileges now that the NHR is gone? That's a good question. What are what are the tax privileges now, if any, Gilda? Maybe you're the best person to ask about that because other people will have asked you that question, of course, when they're asking about moving to Portugal. Well, without the NHR, any so okay um just but but um i think that uh we should analyze before uh because you just got uh, your visa now uh we should analyze if there is anything that we can um understand if you're still in the transitory regime uh, okay that's a good question uh, or a good point you make there Gilda. Mm -hmm. so we need to look at your timing um, Larry, to see if you still might qualify for the NHR. But basically, your answer is there aren't any tax privileges for foreigners now with the NHR gone. Is that right, Gilda? Well, there still are for the highly qualified and researchers and... and ah, uh, special yes. case. And the people who qualified before the, 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 the scheme ended, of mm -hmm. course, and, and they, will, they, they will continue to have their rights until their particular 10 years ends, but nothing for new people coming in, um, it would appear, Gilda. Do you think the government yes. will change their mind on this? Uh, I know that they are being uh, pre uh, uh, suffering some uh, pressure on that yes. by many of the um, law firms, but for the moment, their answer is still that uh, we are going to struggle to try to have all the um, all the taxes uh, lower for everyone, not for the foreigners. Yeah, well, that's fair enough, isn't it? And uh, a lot of people, a lot of parties looking forward to that um, as well. Lower taxes and tax better spent possibly in Portugal as well. So thank you for the insight on that. Sorry, it's not better news, Larry. And I suppose the emphasis... But, I'm sorry, on the other ahead. hand, they are also uh, studying how to how to get um, foreigner investment. Yeah, right. Again, so maybe if they get to a conclusion that uh, the NHR can be a way of doing it, mm -hmm. maybe we'll have a chance. Who knows? We we, we yeah. might see those days again. So really the emphasis is on tax efficiency rather than tax privileges now. So make mm -hmm. sure that your money is, your wealth is managed well uh, in the absence of a, a, a specific foreigner tax privilege there, Larry S. Larry M, a lot of experts, a friend became a resident. So asking for a friend, um, became a resident on the 18th of December, 2023. Please describe how the friend should file taxes for the couple of weeks as a resident in 2023. I ask since the friend was told by a Portuguese accountant who works with expats, incidentally, that they might not need to file. What do the experts suggest? And we'll go to you on this, Yilda, again. Uh, suggest that my close friend, who is of high moral standards, and averse to hard labour in the lithium mines, what should they do? And look at this. Um, Larry's been in Portugal long enough to be able to just say brigard at the end there on his Zoom message. So what do you say to that question there for the friend? Uh, well, I I say uh, that you should tell your friend <laughs> um, that 
I, I don't think it's good for a professional to say you might not have to feel. Yes, okay? good point. <laughs> because uh, either you have to feel or not. You yeah. might not. It doesn't seem very professional. Right. So <laughs> according to the law, you need to declare your taxes in Portugal uh, worldwide when you became a tax resident. And if that happened on the, um, on the 18th of December, you should go to an accountant and uh, he or she will prepare the tax return according to that. But if you want to do things by the book and, and how things should, should be done, uh, it should be considered uh, as a resident in your tax return and you should file the Portuguese tax return for that period. There you go. That's what you can tell your friend. Maybe you could ring them up now, Larry, and let us know what they say about that. Um, mm -hmm. Alicia, uh, thank you, Gilda. Uh, are applicants still encountering challenges or problems getting their NHR applications approved? This is probably for the ones who were uh, applicable or eligible under the transitional regime. Yes, it is for those that are eligible for the NHR under the transitional regime. Alicia, sorry, I should have read that to the end. What advice do you have for someone who will be applying, specifically through item six of the transitory programme? That's a new one on me. Uh, the procedure initiated by the 31st of December 23 of granting a residence visa or residence permit with the competent entity. So there sounds like a bit of a blockage with the transitional transitory regime. What should people do about that, Gilda? Uh, they uh, they should apply, okay, uh, like in normal circumstances, um, and most likely it's going to be granted. And what uh, we think it's going to happen, uh, it's that those um, NHR um, NHR that are going to be granted in the transitory regime, they they most likely they are going to be outed. Okay. To see if people are not um, are not giving uh, false um, false information, false declarations. Just trying it on, basically. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think that you should keep the proof that you are under the transitory regime uh, and make the application with our help, of course. There you go, Alicia. Get in touch with uh, A with EI and Gilda and team via the Expats Portugal Business Directory. Great answer. Thanks, Gilda. Um, thanks, Gilda. It's all about Gilda at the moment. Uh, thanks, Gilda, to you and your team for miraculously getting us a Canadian consular appointment. It's not easy to say that. Canadian consular appointment successful. And also IMA appointments in Portugal on May the 31st. Thank you. So not a question, but just some acknowledgement and thanks there for you and your wonderful team from Warren, the the, um, the amazing Warren Sharm. Uh, Benoit from another very wet and windy Paish Dagaj uh, over there in Wales. Good evening to you, Peda. How are you this week? Hope you're feeling better. Uh, what's the exchange rate right now then? That's from La Ronda to Steve. Um, can you give us a bit of a snapshot on uh, US uh, Euro um, action there, please, Steve? Oh, yeah, there you are. Have you frozen up there, Steve? You've not got the best connection with you there. I don't know which way you look at it. It's uh, around, uh, so the actual market, I know, sevens, uh, which is around 0.93, which is sort of, um, so like I say, it's moved. Uh, can, you, can you hear me now? Not brilliantly, but yeah, try try again. Let's see how we get on. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, so we, we're around uh, around the you know the low one oh sevens or point nine three, depending on which way you look at it. Uh, that's the interbank rate, obviously, where the banks trade uh, hundreds of, of millions between themselves. Uh, but yeah, it's it's moved over over, over a cent uh, in in US dollar uh, sellers' favours uh, recently. Okay, thanks for that, Steve. And thank you for answering that. Yeah, for, in case you couldn't hear Steve very well there, it's in the Zoom chat over here on Zoom if you happen to be here as well. Uh, thank you over on YouTube. We've got questions from Joseph, Shana, Mr. S and Jesse. We'll come back to those. Thank you very much for being there over on YouTube. Let's just make sure we've taken care of everybody over here on Zoom. Could not hear Gilda for about a minute could she state again? Um, I think that was probably to do with the taxation and the filing of the tax return. And as I recall, Gilda, you thought it wasn't entirely professional for a 
for a tax advisor to say you'll probably be okay or you might not need to. Uh, you need a definitive answer on that. And given this, that particular situation um, where that person was resident for a couple of weeks at the end of 23, they should still file and um, get their return into the IRS here in Portugal. Um, thank you very much. I, it, let me know, um, Andrea, if that was the right um, answer for you there and that's what you couldn't hear. Uh, no, no, from Gail. Uh, thank you, Gail, for being here on the second call of the evening. Could you tell me the differences between MGEN's health guard and serenity services? Can you answer that one, no, no? Okay, I think so. So serenity, uh, they do medical concierge advice, basically. I think that they have some some agreement with uh, with some doctors that they they know. I'm assuming, and um, when uh, people need for um, for a doctor, so what they do is just check the listings the of of the healthcare's and knowing uh, in Aveiro which doctor has some speciality so this is something that uh, we we uh, we help you uh, to do it by your own so you don't need to wait for us or for anyone else so it's it's pretty easy so we give you we we share this information with you and oh, we provide you all of the informations okay and is that is that using when you're using mgen's health card is that is that what uh, no 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 mgen is one thing health guard is different Health guard is uh, an insurance policy uh, which aim is to overtake the health insurance restrictions and when i say health insurance i'm not um, saying all only uh, mjn is all of the health insurance plans in the portuguese market so it's uh, the health guard is an insurance policy that provides medical concierge advice is based on um, a call center not based in india and i'm not talking badly about uh, indians okay so um it's it's a call center based in portugal fully assisted by doctors portuguese doctors or nurses um to assist you on the healthcare issues uh assisting you to to know which is the similar medication in portugal uh so this is the the first service the the concierge advice the second one is nursing or uh, um, uh, physiotherapy at home because usually health insurance provides plans provide uh, physiotherapy or nursing care at the hospital or the clinic uh, so basically these two okay wonderful thank you very much i think gail wants to ask you a little bit more go ahead gail um so i just have heard about serenity and some of the um forums but mm. really I don't need it because I would just come to Winsure to ask questions. If I'm struggling with trying to figure out doctors and that, I don't need to pay for an extra service because I've got Wins Insure, right? If I go with MGM and the health guard and I'm having issues because a lot of people have trouble trying to figure out the difference between the private and public. And so Serenity fills that gap, but I've got you. So, right. Uh, but, but I think that Serenity works well. I think I'm not. Yeah. Uh... I don't have a relation uh, with them for a while, maybe two years, but I think that they work well. But I'm I don't know much about about that. Is Gail right in 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 the assessment that you can help anyway? Though, um, if if Gail wants to call you and and get help, uh, for example, uh, yes, uh, we 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 work as with any kind of insurance. So yeah. if you need our assistance will assist you for sure you uh, also sometimes we need to be involved and try to call to the hospitals in, in your behalf try to understand some bills we are doing this it's hard for us because due to the data protection law um, hospitals or clinics doctors are not allowed to provide this information so sometimes we try to do this uh, or a lot of times we we'll try to do this and we are blocked because uh, they will not uh, reply to to us, but they will reply to you. Okay. Ah, interesting. Okay, there you go, Gail. I think Jerry has something to add to this. Um, yes, uh, please 
Carl, uh, did somebody raise my hand for me, or did it just mysteriously appear up there? It wasn't me, I don't know. <laughs> Magic. Am I working? That's creepy, isn't it? <clears throat> Gail, I just wanted to add a little bit um, uh, to the point that you made there. Um, I, I'm sort of speaking to people on a daily basis about this. Um, my recommendation is that if you have private medical insurance um, through that company, and if it's with Winsurance, by all means with Winsurance Help, um, seek out the doctor that you're happy to work with. And, 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 and most importantly, an English speaking doctor. You do not want to be having discussions in half Portuguese and half English about your medical health, right? Um, and, and if that doctor is in the private system, he or she will most likely be in a hospital, in a private hospital, and be very well connected in the, med in the private medical system in Portugal. At least this is my experience. And you know, he or she is likely to sit on the board at the hospital and have you know a colleague who's a foot specialist and an eye specialist and whatever and whatever. And he or she will be your gateway to the medical system because once you've got in and once you've got that um, private doctor working for you, um, you know that's really the the gateway in in my opinion. Very good. Hope that helps. Yep. Okay. Well and I also want to add something. Go ahead, Gail, Gail uh, if you work with, the, with insurance, they are going to do much more than they are supposed to do. They are always going behind. Uh, so you can feel 100% secure. There you they go. do That's more, funny. they do much more than they are supposed to do. How do you know that, Gilda? Is that what clients are feeding back to you? Yes. Yeah. And, and also because I'm a client also, so I know. Sorry, I didn't mean to breach any confidentiality there, but you said it, not me. I just wondered how you how you know that. Uh, so you know that from your own personal point of view and from client feedback as well. That's absolutely wonderful. I, I knew that too because um, you know is so um, humble. He doesn't want to say, "Well, you know, serenity," and I, and so I already gathered that. I was just trying to figure out. So I got my answer, and and Gilda just backed it up. So excellent. Okay. <laughs> there you go, Nuno. You can you can quietly glow in the I, background. I don't have words to say to <laughs> any of you. Thank you all. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. So, let me just add one thing. Um, I recommend uh, to use the health um, the the health uh, network healthcare network of the insurer, no matter the insurer, because if you are accessing to the healthcare network you have 100% sure that the doctors on it, they are fully authorized by the Ordem dos Médicos, is the association of all the doctors, that they are allowed to work in Portugal and that they have liability insurance, professional liability insurance. Otherwise, and you can search on Google, sometimes people find on a hard way that the doctor is not a doctor or is not allowed to work in Portugal as a doctor and you will face problems. So yeah, right. That's just good always the healthcare network. Okay, okay. wonderful. Thanks, Nunu, for that. And uh, Debbie's saying, I just signed up for MGen Insurance as well as HealthGuard through Insurance. I also applied for my pet insurance for my, get this, Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. What a great name um, for a breed that is. And uh, maybe we, can we have a name for your dog as well um, through Wind Insurance as well. So just so you know, you can get pet insurance as well as motor insurance. Pretty much any kind of insurance you're going to need here in Portugal. Uh, Wind Insurance, um, Nuno and the team can help you with that. Okay, uh, back to you, Gilda, because what uh, Andrea didn't hear was the latest on the NHR, specifically on the transitory regime. Could you Would you mind summarising that uh, briefly again? Uh, well, you, you need to see if you're... Um, there are certain items that qualify you to the transitory regime. And uh, when once you become a tax resident, you apply for the NHR, okay? But, and, and most likely you are going to be approved, but you need to keep uh, the proof and the track that uh, 
you were able to ask for the for the NHR uh, for the NHR under the transitory regime. Why? Because um, most likely um, they are going to to audit uh, all the NHRs that were granting uh, granted during twenty twenty four. Okay, thanks, Yilda, very much indeed. Right, we've got loads of questions over on YouTube. We'll get to those uh, in just a minute. Thank you, everybody. Somebody was wanting the link for Winsurance. I'll do that for you um, over there on YouTube. Um, dog, the King Charles uh, uh, Cavalier, King Charles Spaniel, is Dazzle, who loves Portugal. Uh, she's so photogenic, too. That is a great name, says Steve. Talking of dogs, uh, Yilda, how is Mandela at the moment? You are not going to believe this. Um, I don't see Mandela for quite a long time. Okay. He's on holidays. <laughs> now, normally an owner says, I haven't seen my dog for a while because I'm on holiday. It's actually Mandela who's on holiday in this instance. Yes. Okay. Has he gone anywhere nice? He went to his favorite hotel and uh, he's been, very happy there. <laughs> Is he coming home or does he just want to, want to stay there? At some point, he will come home. He will come home. He'll miss you eventually, won't he? No, no, it's just kidding. But uh, he went to he went to the hotel because uh, I I went to Angola for for two weeks, and then when when I arrived, um, I'm having some construction works in the house, so he stayed there. Wow. Okay. Life of Riley. Riley would have been a better name for him, I think, than Mandela, mm -hmm. possibly. Um, top. Uh, give him our best regards, won't you? When you when you do finally pick yes, him. Yes, I will. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, sounds like Mandela is living the life. Absolutely right, LaRonda. Mandela is absolutely living the best life. Five star uh, by the sound of it. Okay, let's go over to YouTube then. Thank you very much for all the questions over here. Joseph, um, Jesse, Mr. S, Shana. Let's start with Jesse. I want to ask, um, can accept a bank statement from a microfinance bank. I want to use it for my digital nomad visa to Portugal. Thank you, Jesse, for that question. That's probably for you then, Gilda. What bank accounts are permissible, not permissible? You know, all these online bank accounts, the Revoluts, the Wises of the world, do the Portuguese government allow that in visa applications? Uh, not all of them. Uh, they, they usually... In they ask for a Portuguese bank. But uh, for the digital nomad, you don't need to have a previously bank account. Oh, okay. So the I don't know what a microfinance bank is actually, Jesse, but it, it would need to be Portuguese if it came to it. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I seem to have turned the captions on um, Zoom uh, into German. So welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Well, welcome, Ger uh, German uh, listeners tonight. I'm going to switch that back if I possibly can, um, which, I, yes, I think I can do that. All right. Sorry about that. So temporarily there. We're teaching you an extra language um, this evening. Um, that should be okay now. Let's go to Mr. S. Hola. Uh, good evening to you, uh, Mr. S. I have a friend trying to renew, another friend trying to renew their residency card online at the old Ceph website without success. An error message. What's going on there? That's a great question, Mr. S. What is going on? Um, with the Ceph website. There are still glitches there, aren't there? Even though it's you know supposed to be rebranded and relaunched as IMA, we still have those difficulties, don't we, Gilda? Yes. Um, it's it's supposed to... Ceph doesn't exist anymore, but if you want to renew it, we, you need to go to the website of Ceph that doesn't exist. Yes. <laughs> this is very logical. And what is happening is that this uh, system is full of bugs yeah okay and errors and you can try and try and um most likely you are not going to have success why for two reasons because um they they didn't i, I don't think that no one uh, is working on the it system back there uh, so th there are errors and bugs and they just uh, left it like that and also because they want more people to do it on person. Ah, uh, okay. So they're not prioritizing the website. Or yes. Website improvement. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is worrying and a little bit embarrassing because Portugal does present itself as a as an IT and tech capital. 
of world standing. And we've got all these digital nomads coming into the country. You'd think, wouldn't you, that they might be able to figure that out. But they thank you for that answer there. Um, Shana- I just, I just uh, think that they don't want to work with IMA. Yeah. And and also uh, answering the question of the renewal, uh, we have been uh, able to to help on that because right. sometimes we already know the the errors and and the tricks around the the site. Mr. S, approach Gilda and team Shana. Are this is for you, Daniel? Are applications for citizenship still taking up to two years to process? Uh, it's a classic question for you. Any changes coming on this front, such as a shorter wait time in the near future? One can hope in brackets from Shana. Any news on that, Daniel? Well, they're, stick, they're, they're still taking it quite a long time. Um, but what, what we are noticing is that with this new portal for the, um, the submission of the, the, the applications, the initial phases are going faster because the, the lawyers, the professionals that are submitting these, these applications, we will scan all the documents and we will insert all the re- relevant information online. Mm-hmm. What this actually ends up doing is it saves time from the, um, the registry, the conservatoria in uh, Portuguese, and thus um, applications are on the initial phases that are being submitted lately, they are moving faster than uh, they were. So I think that with time, um, processing time for applications will will be a bit better. It was a good measure just to put computers working for um, the, the system. And basically the lawyers um, are doing a portion of the work that was being done by the registry before. And we do uh, actually need to keep the documents, the original documents with us in case that the, the, the registry does have some questions. So um, at the end of the day, this was a good measure. It's speeding up processing time, but it's still around two years. So, yeah, it takes quite a long time. OK, yeah, there you go, Shana. Thanks, Daniel, for that answer. Uh, I think over to you, Gilda, again. And uh, Carolina gave us a bit of an update on this, I believe, last week. Uh, Doug and Gwen from New Zealand, are there currently difficulties in setting up bank accounts? We've read reports of it taking up to three months, but our understanding was that it should be quite quick and straightforward. Carolina was telling me you've made some progress in this department, Gilda. A good a good relationship with um, a, a new bank for EI, for A. Uh, uh, yes, actually, it was uh, Daniel's referral. So um, if... If you if you want to also uh, work with Daniel on this, um, it's fine because he was the one that uh, referred me to this person, and uh, we we've been making progresses with the bank accounts. Although it still takes time. Uh, does it take three months? That's Doug and Gwen's concern. Uh, no, I think in uh, maybe one month we can do it. And that's because it's being done remotely, is it? And the movement of documents back and forth. Yes. Okay. Because I mean, if you're in, if you are in, if you happen to be in Portugal, you could somebody could come to your office and be handheld to the bank, and it could be done in a day, presumably, if they're in the country. Yes, it can be done in a day. What we do is that we collect all the information, we send it to the bank, and then uh, the person just go goes there to sign. Yep. Okay. So um, there you go. Uh, A little bit of uh, progress for you there. Shouldn't take that long, Doug and Gwen in New Zealand tonight. Let's go back to Zoom. Uh, Shana, we did your question. Joseph. Joseph was with us last week, of course. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for your help last week. Big heart. I have a follow up NHR question last week. I asked the following question. I made a VFS appointment in 23, 2023 to qualify for the NHR, but the appointment date is in 24. I will not meet the criteria for the D7 at the time of the appointment, Ah, but will meet the criteria about one to two months after the appointment date. Also, I may not be able to attend the appointment. I'm considering three scenarios. Which do you favor of these, Gilda? Three scenarios. I want to choose the one that is least likely to make me ineligible for the NHR. Number one, rescheduling my VFS appointment to a later date. Number two, not attending the VFS appointment and then scheduling another VFS appointment for later in 2024 at a time when I meet the D7 criteria. Or three, physically attending the VFS appointment if I'm able but without meeting the D7 criteria at that time. That last one sounds a bit risky. If you don't meet the criteria, is there any point going along to the appointment there, Gilda? No, but you you should risk the reschedule. Okay. And also uh, what I advise you to do um, is to have a, a consultation 
with someone in my team so that uh, this person can evaluate if there is something that, that you can do, because sometimes people think that they are not meeting the criteria and they are. And also if, uh, if it's something uh, like irrelevant that you can submit the process and then join the other documents after. Because if you, if you want to do things as you are planning, uh, then uh, being under the transitory regime for the NHR can be um, a little bit tricky. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you very much. Just to let you know that uh, next week at 7.30, got a life coach joining us uh, with a life with life coaching insight into moving to Portugal. So that'll be interesting. Uh, make sure you join us. And as an Expats Portugal member, you can join us in the Zoom call and ask questions directly and hang out afterwards after we've done the recording. That's next week at 7.30. It's the Dream Team now. Ask any questions you want to ask about moving to Portugal with our professionals here, all of whom you can find in the Expats Portugal business directory. We're going to go. That's for you then, Joseph. That's that answered. I hope that's OK. Uh, oh, you did have another appointment. In fact, there's many scenarios there, but I think what Gilles has told you um, is probably what you need to do. Millionaire Jeans, interesting name on YouTube. You also have a question. Well, go ahead and ask it. Please do. We've only got about 20 minutes left of the Dream Team session tonight. Jesse, uh, thank you. Thank you for the team you have put in place. I want to ask uh, that to apply for digital nomad visa in Portugal, do I need to open an account first before applying? I don't know if that was connected to your bank account before, but just to reiterate, Gilda, did you say you don't need a bank account when you're a digital nomad? No, not for the digital nomad. Okay. And is that the D8 visa, is that remaining as popular as it was? Because we do you remember those days when it first came out? We had some amazing calls uh, and webinars uh, with that. Is it still as popular as it, as, it, as, as it was when it first was released and launched? No, because of the NHR. Oh, okay. All right, that's a casualty. Because then. at that time, um, people wanted to move here and they knew uh, that they were not going to be taxed here because of the NHR. Mm, okay. And now it's a little bit different. Okay, there you go. That's the fate of the D8 until further notice. Um, Ubi is here as well. Good to see you. Uh, I saw a pic of my new boyfriend, Daniel Reyes. What's this about, Daniel? The hardest working man in Lisboa and all of Canada. We know about that bit, about you're the hardest working man in law. Uh, what's this about uh, a new picture of you? Are you officially a poster boy of the legal profession here in Portugal? I wish. I don't know what's that about, but I, I'm quite sure, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> we all are now. We all are. So <laughs> what is this? Maybe it's a calendar of, of Please the... Please explain. <laughs> yes. Handsome lawyers, 2025, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. OK, right. Um, in the absence of any more questions, I'm going to go straight to my culture question this evening, and then we can probably squeeze a few more quickies in for people who haven't managed to ask their question. Um, or if I've overlooked anything, just reiterate that on YouTube or on Zoom. But a great question. Thanks to Daniel. Uh, where, where maybe you were photographed earlier on, Daniel, uh, we're going to talk about favourite beaches. Um, let's start with you. Are you prepared to tell us uh, your favourite beach or do you want to keep it a secret? Well, yeah, I'll tell you my, my favorite beach is uh, where I do spend my holidays in, in, in Algarve. And it's right. called in Portuguese Ilha do Farol, or uh, the translation is Lighthouse Island. Right. And it's uh, um, my favorite place because it doesn't have any cars. So you need to travel by boat um, and then you just walk. So that's brilliant. And it's really safe. Uh, it's good for small kids and um, the weather usually during the, the summer is really nice, warm water and not um, no, that many waves. So quite a good place to, to spend the holidays. Wonderful. I, 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 you go there by boat and there are no cars. That sounds absolutely Correct. beautiful. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. That's okay. It. And may I ask then in Lisbon, what's your, what's your favorite beach if you're not traveling all the way down to, to the Algarve? Well, I'm split between uh, uh, the beaches like Praia das Maçãs or eventually something like Fonte da Talha after Costa da, da Caparica. One of my favorites. <laughs> Love Fonte da Talha. What a great... And you can get a bus there from the, from the center yeah. of town as well. It's a wonderful bus ride if, you, if you've not used public transport in Portugal. Lovely trip um, across the bridge and to that lovely beach at Fonte da Talha. Let's go to Nunu. I don't suppose you get much time to be on the beach, Nunu. <laughs> 
because you're always yeah. working. But when you do get the chance, what's your favorite beach in Portugal? Oh, okay, uh, before and because Daniel talked about uh, Font de Telha, yes, naked or, the, or afraid? <laughs> don't answer, don't answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> following okay. so uh, i think I, I don't have um uh, a special uh beach nevertheless there are one that has uh, that means more than any other to me uh which is um uh, oh it is in stubal okay the figurine Praia de Figueirinha, because I, I study, I have studied it in a Estranato Marista de Lisboa, a college, and all the summers they took us, all the class, to Praia de Figueirinha. So I have these memories I when I was six, seven, ten years old, go to Praia de Figueirinha with my, my friends of class, which oh. keep be, keep, uh, be the ones that uh, I have as the closest friends. So Oh, wonderful memories of friends that are still best friends now. How lovely. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, Figueirinhos, did you call it? Okay, a Praça de Figueirinhos. Oh, it's not Praça, a Praia. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending people somewhere else uh, there with my poor Portuguese. Excellent. Jerry, have you got a favourite beach um, in Portugal? That, I mean, living in Tamar, you're quite a long way from the coast, but presumably from time yeah. to time you like to well, get to the coast. Well, we have, we have river beaches, but they're all secret, so we're not allowed to tell anyone. Otherwise, we, we, we get shot. Yes. Um, so we keep them a secret, but I'm not a, I'm not a huge beach fan. Well, I love the question from Laronda. Are there clothing optional beaches in Portugal? Now, you know a bit about this, don't you, Carl? Uh, I know a bit about it. Not from personal experience. It was an accident. Oh. <laughs> no, it, wasn't, it wasn't even an accident. But I do know that um, Daniel's answered this. And I love the way you put that, Laronda. Clothing optional rather than just straightforward nudist or naked beaches. But yeah, uh, that's why Nuno was asking that question, I think. Along that coast from Caparica, um, and as you go south, there are certainly nudist beaches there. So be careful, or clothing optional beaches. Um, is that happening? Daniel, you seem to know a little bit about this. Um, and Jerry thinks I do too. But are there others around um, Portugal as well? What, what's, the, what's the law on this? <laughs> well, um, as I was uh, um, addressing Laurana's La question, in uh, Fontatalha, uh, indeed, on that portion of the beach, nudity is allowed by law, so you, a cop cannot come and say, well, dress yourself, you are breaching the law. Uh, but I don't know any others uh, around the country, to be honest. That, that's the only that I know. Um, uh, you also you also have Meco. Oh, Meco, yeah, that's it. Meco is another oh. nudist, nudist be beach. Uh, so uh, you're not obliged to get undressed, but uh, it is expected. So if you are dressed, people will look at you like you are you don't belong. Especially if you're wearing a suit. Correct. <laughs> there, there are several in the Algarve that that you can just sort of. It's easy just to wander into them because it'll just yes. be a section. It uh, happened uh, to me once. I was I was I I love to walk on the sands. And then it's like I'm walking, 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 and then I look around. Oh my god, <laughs> going back. Okay, turns out because it's not something that I am. I'm not uh, open mind to that, and it's not something that I would do. So, yeah. okay. Um, Thank you. I felt All... embarrassed. All right, and on on this. Well, no... well how about uh, Gilda? How about we have a dream team session on an, on a nudist speech sometime? I think that would be really liberating, don't you, Carl? Astrid, what do you think about that? I can't stop coughing here. Sorry. <laughs> I don't have a... That's really... We'll, we'll, we'll just keep the camera on you. Yeah, Jerry. Jerry? No idea. Lead the way. Oh, glorious leader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Laronda, uh, they made... How did the ca the conversation get over here? Yeah, right. Um, Laronda is to blame, actually, for that. They, they make you feel <laughs> comfortable not being naked. Hilarious. There you go. So you're... Uh, Con favorite conventional beach let me put it that way Gilda where do you like to go uh I I I'm you know I'm feeling very amazed by La Ronda's what she just wrote yes and I agree with you it's it's maybe I'm not that liberate yeah 
Okay. I, I would agree with you, LaRonda. Um, it is the most liberating thing you can do is to get naked in public. But um, we do have a lawyer here, so you might want to make a note of uh, Daniel's details should should the urge <laughs> take a, take you over at any time uh, while you're here. I, I, until I did it my first time, I, I was like Jilda. I was like, oh, there's people. I'm not going to do it. But the I kind of eased into it. And after that, I was like, oh, my God. Wow. It's Why? freedom, nobody, right? It's nobody freedom. Can, nobody can. Your head. Nobody There's no can. chance There's that you're no naked on this, on this meeting, is there? Uh, no. no. <laughs> well, okay. I think that's next. That, that, next... That, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, okay. I think that next, the dream team, uh, it's going to be different. All right. Okay. <laughs> See you next next week at nine o'clock uh, for that. There are places where I don't want to get sand, says Debbie. Lol. Yeah, I guess that's the <laughs> naked sunbathing. What's in it for me? Sand, probably. <laughs> Um, okay, so hold on. I'm trying to make a sensible conversation of favourite beaches here. Thank you, LaRonda, for your uh, additional comments this evening. Uh, Gilda, your favourite conventional beach, please. Well, I think that most of you know, the, at least all that know, all the people that know me, it's Burgau in the Algarve. Oh, yes, Burgau. What a lovely beach uh, down mm -hmm. there. Superb, okay, near Oak Club, uh, where we've got the Tiago uh, Zeferino, I think, uh, the great chef down there as well. Excellent. Good. Now, my favorite beach is San Martino de Porto. Some of you know it. And I like to think of it as the wine glass bay, the scallop bay. Somebody call it the B-Day Bay because it's shaped like a B-Day. Now, I can assure you it's just the shape and not the water quality that they're talking about with that description. But I'd never heard that before, the B-Day Bay of San Martino de Porto. Astrid, do you have a favorite beach? I love Port Corvo in Alentejo. Okay, so that's a little bit quieter and a little bit different and possibly wilder. Is that right? Yes. Right. Okay. Excellent. Um, and that's why you put a towel down, Debbie, from La Ronda is continuing. And I think uh, maybe a, a, a forum thread, La Ronda, if you want to start the first, probably the first Expats Portugal nudist bathing thread, please go ahead and do that. And you may, um, you may, you know, create a, a, an interest group over there. I suspect you will, actually. Um, let's see what happens with that. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, let me just see if there are any more questions in the chat this evening. Did I get to everybody? Steve Flack, I don't think I got to your favourite beach. Uh, you like to play golf here, don't you? Uh, rather than go on the beach, if, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I mean, look, I've actually, I'm totally honest, I've actually never been to Portugal. I've never been able to get over. Uh, the, the guys have never invited over. So Unbelievable. I've had, the, I've had the chance. Um, I know Neil's been over there a few times, and obviously Ben's there at the moment. Uh, I've had the comment. I'd love to say you know, I've got a favourite one, but uh, honestly, I've not had the chance to go over. We I need feel... to invite you. Dude, I feel really bad Please now. Please feel invited. I know. Yeah, I feel I know. really bad asking no. you that question, and you haven't even been invited. I know. You better if you tell Neil and Ben, they can yeah. uh, send me over. Okay, we're going to start a GoFundMe and um, a petition to get Steve <laughs> get yeah. Steve Portugal, fantastic. Okay, um, Diana, I've just got to say, whatever beach I find myself on at the moment is my favourite. That's a good comment. Thank you, Diana. And when can you start swimming in Portugal? I was in the water in B Day Bay in January. It depends how um, hardy you are, Alex. Uh, Nineteen degrees. Uh, it was thirty-five. The air temperature at times was thirty-five. Somebody told me in the algo. Probably warm enough to swim today, Alex. Gail, you have. Um, I think do you have something to add to this conversation about beaches. No, no, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm with Jilda there. Stay um, out of it. Okay. Go <laughs> but ahead. hey, you never know. When I come to Portugal, I may change my mindset. I had a question for Steve. Um, it looks like Canada might be the first out of the gate to decrease their their interest rates uh, because they've gotten inflation under control, but we're we have no economic growth. We avoided the the recession, but that's about it. Um, and it looks like they might increase it in June. So if they're first out of the gate, how's that going to impact the exchange rate from Canada to Euro? So normally, if you see, uh, so are you say, so if, if the, if the, if the um, exchange, sorry, if the interest rate goes up, then you normally see, uh, a, you know, the, a positive movement for, for the currency. They start to cut rates, then uh, you then you'll see the opposite effect. 
problem is as well because it's so data dependent you can see that happening and then it will depend on so you may see a big drop down but then it depends on what they will say in that speech after so they may say oh this could be it for now so you might just see a quick jump down and then it come back straight up again uh, so it just depends on sort of what their plan is uh, for the future and, and things like that but um, and it's you know when, when we do see these moves, it's, you know as as we've just just seen with the dollar, it's it's definitely a good way to to jump on. If you see some positive movement, always jump on the back of it. That's that's just a personal opinion. Okay. There yeah, you go. because the U.S. one looks like they're going to hold out for a while, but it looks it does, like Canada yeah. is going to have to do something because of the economic lack of economic growth. Mm. So. Mm. Thank you yeah, for that. So I can say the U.S. keeps changing their mind as well. You keep hearing one thing or another, say, oh, there's going to be a lot of cuts. And the next thing you know, they've changed their mind and it could only be a couple of cuts this year. So it's, yeah, it's and it's it, it, the big thing at the moment is, is there's only really movement when it's data that comes out. You know, it's, it's so data dependent. So you almost have to wait for it to happen. You can see you know, there'll be expectations uh, and then all of a sudden that doesn't happen. And then you'll see the movement. It's It's one of those. All right. Thank Thanks, you Steve. very much for the question, Gail. Thank you for your answer, Steve. Uh, some quickies then before we go. Three minutes to go until 10. Um, we have uh, Pre Petty Nerd on YouTube. Someone on an expat Facebook page, oh dear, uh, said that they had trouble getting getting auto insurance due to them being age 60 and not having a Portuguese or EU driver's license. Is this based on age or the license? Nunu, can you answer that for us? Let's see. Is Nuno still here? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, could you repeat? Because I'm I'm um, yeah, trying tricky. to answer to all around the. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I do beg your pardon. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. That debate continues. Um, <laughs> someone on the an expat Facebook page, uh, which is always a, an awkward start, isn't it? Had trouble getting auto insurance due to them being sixty and not having a Portuguese or EU driver's license. Should that compromise people's chances of getting? Uh, insurance, car insurance here in Portugal because they're 60 and they haven't got a Portuguese driver's license? Have or or haven't? They, they haven't. Have. They haven't got a Portuguese or EU, EU driver's license. Okay, so there are only a few insurers that uh, insure without a Portuguese driver's license. Some of them only um, third party, so liability, not on damages. Uh, if you have uh, some situation that you think that we could help, we could look. Uh, and, and find cover That's but yes I'm there are some restrictions when you don't have the Portuguese documentation if anyone can find you some Nunu and Winsurance can Petty Nerd so check them out and Joseph yes get, let's get to the bottom of that why don't you make a call to A to EI and talk to Gilda and team over there and get to the bottom of that situation that you've got going on there that Gilda addressed earlier on um, to that uh, mystery from earlier on there Daniel um, Ubi fell asleep and woke up to see you on screen as he awoke from his nap, um, making you a, a, a dream, a dreamboat as well as a poster boy of law. Um, and Ubi likes a Praia de Massage uh, e Melhores, he says in YouTube. Uh, that's Praia de the Apple Beach, of course. That's near Cascais, isn't it? Or Sintra, I believe. Um, and also Constancia is great. That's true. Great river beach there. Constancia, confluence of, of the Zezer and the little Tejo Creek thingy. Um, there's probably a technical name for the little Tejo Creek thingy. But yeah, uh, Jerry is absolutely right. The river beaches of Portugal are definitely worth checking out. Something to behold uh, over here in Portugal, as well as the almighty coast that we've got here of the Atlantic as well. So thanks, Dream Team. Over to you in closing then, uh, Astrid. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It was a very um, uh, informative evening, as always. Uh, you've already mentioned next week, Carl, that we've got our, our special life coach on board. So the the um, the event is up on the in the events calendar now. So you go there and RSVP if you want to um, find out whether you're actually making the right choice coming to Portugal. Wonderful. Okay. I think some people's plans about coming to Portugal have changed this evening. Um, and they may have, you know, if, if you think about what to pack, some people are just not going to bother with a swimsuit anymore. That's a way of uh, making the luggage a bit lighter, <laughs> isn't it? So there you go. Great session as always. Thanks, Debbie. Obrigada. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dream Team. Amazing.